So it's easy to forget just how small these movements are. And this battery, this is the AAA. This is the small one. Now this tiny movement comes from this lady's Rolex Datejust. I did a video on this watch about 18 months ago and it was not in a good way at all. In fact, it was a total disaster. I have never seen so much rust. It was, it was probably madness to try and restore it. So I cleaned the watch up and I did a full restoration of this watch. I got all the rust off and got the watch working well with, without exchanging any of the parts except for the mainspring. And I sent the watch back to the client who's very happy for about a year. But then recently the watch came back under warranty and although it was running actually really strongly, it wasn't telling the time properly. So I did a live stream and I took the watch apart live uh, to do some further analysis and it was clear then that to get this watch up and running again properly, I was gonna need to swap out four probably more like six parts and that's what this video is about now unluckily for me one of these parts that's going to need replacing is the minute wheel pinion and that is the very last part that you take out when you disassemble this watch oh it's under warranty i'm not getting paid for this so best get on with it the first thing to do is remove the automatic works now on this little rolex 2135 there are just two screws that hold down the automatic works just removing those now and coming in carefully with the right size screwdriver just to prise the automatic works up there and just taking them to one side and you can see now that the balance is working away there nicely I would expect that because hey I service this watch so um, you'd expect it to be running nicely now the balance is of course the most delicate component in the watch so I always remove it really as soon as possible so that it's kind of reduces the risk of it being damaged while I'm working on other things and I always put it in its own little special container now the balance on this watch is so small that it won't actually rest where it's supposed to in the middle of that container so I just popped it in the corner there uh, with its screw and popped down the lid and put it to one side so turning now to the keyless works now this component uh, that we're looking at now this is one that was really covered in rust and I removed all the rust I got it to work and it still works now but you know we're not really going to get away with this for much longer so it's really time to remove this component and replace it the screws on this are really really tiny so when you see me removing tiny screws, I tend to use Rodico for that, which is also useful for removing horrid bits of cotton and stuff that suddenly appear out of nowhere. They're just taking that away. I'm focusing in now on the intermediate wheel here. This also is pretty heavily corroded, so that's going to go. The setting lever jumper spring is okay. Uh, but we need to remove it. It is under tension against the setting lever, so it's wise just to put a bit of pegwood on it as you release it. Otherwise, anything under tension has a potential to fly across the room and you never see it again. Uh, this component uh, is one such case. This is quite a strong spring that I'm taking out now. It, it keeps the set, uh, the sliding pinion uh, back um, by pressing back on the sliding pinion yoke. And I'm just putting a bit of Rodico over it as I take it out, just in case anything unexpected happens. 
if I wasn't filming this, I would probably just grasp it and take it out. But uh, if you're new to this, I would advocate using the Rodico. Just uh, removing the minute wheel here. That's also got corrosion on its pinions. So we're going to replace that as well. And looking now to take out the sliding pinion yoke comes out nice and easily that'll that'll just need a clean up really now the setting lever is held down by this spring with this nice chunky screw uh, i say chunky it's actually really really tiny um, but everything's relative right so this spring is is okay a little bit of cosmetic uh, damage to it but that'll be fine and the setting lever is also okay so just gonna spin the movement over and concentrate now on the escapement and we're going to remove the pallet fork the pallet fork is a very very small delicate component and on this movement it's impossibly small uh, just choosing the right size screwdriver now to take the screws out and then just focusing and remove them in turn throwing caution to the wind and using my nice shiny tipped tweezers just going to come back in with those tweezers now and lift off the bridge to be really careful there we go and coming back for the pallet fork itself just removing it clear and then away these uh, screws that I'm removing now are the case uh, retention screws. They retain the movement in the case uh, and should have got rid of them long ago, really. But moving on to the barrel bridge. This has two retention screws. Uh, they're different sizes in this movement. So just removing the first of those and then the uppermost. And just prise up the barrel bridge gently and why not subscribe if you're not subscribed please subscribe to my channel um, uh, oh look that's nice um, the, all the wheels on the bottom of the balance bridge there I serviced all of those first time round, so um, we, we don't need to touch those we're going on now to the hack this component that I'm just taking out there flicked the other component out but I have recovered it so that's not a problem so moving on to the powertrain bridge now this is an easy component to remove but not so easy to put back and you'll see that when we do the reassembly later in the video uh, despite being easy you do still have to be really careful with it the pivots on these wheels are really really tiny just removing there the powertrain there goes the escape wheel and the ratchet wheel the mainspring barrel and lastly the second wheel with a nice chunky pinion on it and the cannon pinion, the cannon pinion is definitely getting removed. It was heavily corroded and it's the component that's slipping. Now, if you look at this screw on top of the advancing wheels, it has two parallel lines either side of the screw slot. And that is to indicate that it is reverse threaded. So you have to, you'll see me here screwing it as if I'm screwing it down, but it actually releases it. Um, I wish every reverse threaded screw had this warning on top so coming in now this takes a little bit of practice to be fair um, just going to pinch that very powerful spring to release the advancing wheel yoke and then grasping the top of the wheel gently smooth that away and immediately you'll see the issue there is a tiny jewel there 
and if I was to let go of that spring it would just fly off so we just have to remove it really carefully that is small that thing so moving on to oh yeah I um, I'm on Instagram and uh, I'm live on Instagram several times a week and also post other interesting stuff there so yeah go and follow me on Instagram um, my Instagram's actually really starting to pick up now which is which is nice so so just pulling the spring back again this time to liberate the advancing wheel yoke give it a little bit of a wiggle sometimes they need a wiggle there we go and then just gently release the spring Now in all of that, I managed to lose the minute wheel pinion. Couldn't find it for ages and then, whoa, there it is, hiding in the bottom of the movement holder. So the first thing that we're going to do now we've got the movement completely disassembled is clean the rust off the main plate. Now I'm using just normal white vinegar for this it's the acid content in the white vinegar that is doing the job and a small uh, toothbrush just to wipe away the rust now this is really the best that we can do here for this i mean i guess we could change the main plate but not only would that be a shame it would be frighteningly expensive so we're just going to clean this up as best as we can. Having done that, you'll immediately see that it is actually, you know, already looking a bit cleaner. But we do need to put the balance back on before we put the parts in the ultrasonic cleaner. And again, being very gentle with the balance. making sure that both pivots are in you know when they're in because when you give it a little shake like this it'll start to act like it normally does when it's working but just to check let's come in with the blower okay that is that's looking nice now so having got that prepared I am going to pop that into one of my tea strainers. Um, I use these tea strainers for the ultrasonic cleaner and a lot of people make comments about them. I actually use uh, two different grades, one with quite thick mesh like this one that you can see here, but you can also get them with much finer mesh and I use the finer mesh ones for the smaller components and I, I'm quite a big fan because they are really, really effective and you know they don't cost an arm and a leg so quite happy about stuff that um, does a job really well but doesn't cost loads of money because trust me most of the tools that I use are just eye-wateringly expensive and putting the wheels of the powertrain in here uh, nice and carefully so last one in let's uh, close that up and let's get and clean the watch oh yeah and please share this video um, much appreciated and if you do uh, little else will certainly come and service your favorite watch while you sleep uh, you heard it here first let's clean the movement now I'm only going to show one of the stages of the cleaning just putting in the cleaning solution here to the ultrasonic cleaner but I also use some rinse and some isopropyl alcohol if you want the details of the cleaning solution that I'm using then just look in the comments because uh, yeah, that's a frequently asked question uh, probably a frequently asked question because of the results because 
I do get great results uh, from my cleaning process. The stuff comes out just like unblemished and minty clean. So just removing the balance now. Carefully pick it up, pop it back in its box and close it again and put it away. Oh, this looks nice. This is my new watch from my own brand major, which was my rank when I left the British Army. Now, in the past, these have been made all in black, but this is the new version in steel. Check out the link in the description. So, time to swap out the dreaded minute wheel pinion. The, uh, the one that I'm holding there on the right, that is the old one. It's not in as bad a condition as I feared, but because the issue is with the cannon pinion and because this is so far inside the movement the temptation was not to replace this component but that temptation from an engineering point of view needs to be resisted at all costs because you know we want to do a good job here so we are going to put this nice nut shiny new component in uh, with a little bit of lubrication so just flip it over and pop it in. Takes a little time just to line it up nicely. It needs a little bit of lubrication at the top because uh, it's going to sit in a jewel in the its own bridge uh, when I can get it to sit properly and uh, fourth time lucky maybe. And just putting in the screws now to hold this bridge down. The first one in, spin the movement round and secure the second one. And knock the camera, sorry about that. I don't know whether you heard that but the jack doors are outside it is evening here and the jack doors are turning up in force before they settle to roost for the night kind of like the jack doors quite a lot actually just tighten these two up not too tight nothing has to be you don't have to graunch it right up it's not a tank So just uh, reinstalling the powertrain now. The second wheel goes in first and then the mainspring barrel. Just going to give that a little tweak, a little rock just to make sure it's located. Now easy to forget um, but the balance hack needs to go in and it's two part um, assembly and there's a little part, this one here that actually is thrust forward when you pull the crown out and uh, the little bit on the end that I'm touching there just touches the edge of the balance and stops the balance but it does move up and down so it's metal against metal so it needs a little bit of grease there and then this big chunkier component holds it in place uh, later when I put the setting lever in I have to make sure that this is in the right location so the setting lever locates with the hole in the hack itself. Now turning to the barrel bridge, just placing that carefully on. And just got to get it in place. There we go. That's good. Give it a little tap down and then slightly harder with something wooden or brass just to make sure you don't scratch the bridge at the top there and just securing it now with its two 
screws, but watch carefully, watch carefully now. Stand by, it's about to happen. Okay, that's interesting. Um, keep it real, keep it authentic. Uh, this just happened, um, which is poor workmanship. Okay, the end of my uh, screwdriver just fell out as I was bringing it to bear. So, note to self make sure that the screwdriver ends are not only sharp and uniform but properly screwed in to the screwdriver handle there we are let's do that now okay so take two i have now screwed the end of the blade of the screwdriver into the handle so we should find that it works just fine And that seems to be doing what we want quite nicely. Try and keep it in focus. There we are. Okay, good. So just placing the other screw on. This one's slightly uh, longer and has a kind of blank shank at the top of it. And uh, just gonna screw this one down as well and lubricating the pivot now I have actually made a mistake here and I wonder if you can notice it uh, I have corrected it by this point in the process so just put in the escape wheel in takes a little bit of time to locate it in its jewel there we go and coming in with the third wheel it's a nice design in the powertrain on this movement it's nice because the fourth wheel which is the one that drives the sweep hand or the second hand um, is, is naturally in the middle of the movement which isn't the case when you're doing a traditional pocket watch design so Rolex made a nice design here and used the space really well now this is tricky putting this bridge on and getting all the pivots lined up is not a trivial thing to do. It does take a little bit of time to get it all to seat properly. Just nudging it in there. Having said that, that went in pretty, pretty easily. In fact, it went straight in. Okay, um, I have done it quite a lot of times. Uh, if you're doing one of these and it's uh, not going in, uh, don't get frustrated with it. Just take a break, go and do something else, and then come back to it. Because if you try and force anything, you will break the pivots on the any of the wheels, um, and that's going to get expensive with a Rolex. So just uh, screwing this down. I always screw it down reasonably lightly, just in case I have made a mistake. And uh, just going to put the other screw in now and just locate that and having done that just test the motion on the powertrain there all you've got to do is gently rock the barrel bridge uh, the, the main spill barrel So we are going to clean the capstones now and there's already been a disaster because taking one of these out 
uh, the Kiff Springs has broken. And just to uh, orientate you to the size of these replacement Kiff Springs, um, these are some new Kiff Springs. You can see the one on the right is deformed, uh, but this is how it should be done. Uh, just come in there with the tool and that is uh, a little oiler that I have filed down and polished to the right size just to show that it's not a fluke in again with the tool and this actually is one of the jewels with the die shock so it's on the balance so take out the whole shock assembly there And having cleaned it, pop it back in. Uh, currently without the capstone, you can just use the removal tool there to help it uh, locate it properly. Again, what you're looking at here is really very, very tiny. And then we're gonna place the jewel on top of this before um, we clip it back down. All of this takes a little bit of practice. So we've put the jewel on and then just flick it like that and orientate it so that you can come across the end prong on the kiff spring there and just flick it down and it'll seat in nicely. There we go. That is how to do the kiff springs and capstone. So the advancing wheel uh, cam needs to go back in needs a little bit of lubrication uh, it's late at night now when I'm working quite often working late at night uh, don't mind that quite like it it's quite restful um, but as you can see getting a little bit of reflection from my lights here so I apologize about that just going to lubricate the post for the jewel on the yoke there. Tiny little bit of oil for that and then placing this tiny jewel and the jewel helps reduce the friction on the movement of the cam and the cam turns the date over um, or assists with the date being turned over at midnight. And being a Rolex, it is all nicely jeweled. Just checking that it moves nicely on the post there. That all looks good. And moving it up against the cam there. So reverse threaded, I've cleaned that uh, screw up a little bit and just placed that on. You can see the jewel through the little gap in the wheel there, which is helpful. Um, but we are missing the two screws at the moment uh, to hold both the spring uh, and the yoke. So just placing the first of those on. Now that actually, that actually is a bit too rusty to go on. That's a bit horrid. So I, I can't really, in all fairness, put that back on. So let's clean the head of this screw up. I'm using this special polishing stone here and just quickly moving the screw. The, 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 the knack is not to pinch the end too tightly, um, otherwise the screw will fly across the room and, and it is tiny and it will drop down between the floorboards um, and you know everything's on hold while you get another Rolex screw uh, which will cost you about the same as a small island in the Caribbean. Um, but there we go, that's cleaned up a bit better. So that's looking nice now. Just place that onto the right one. So this is gonna retain the quite strong spring that controls the motion, or rather limits the motion of the advancing wheel cam. Now we have to fit the new cannon pin in. I've done that and I am now putting on some reassuringly expensive cannon pinion grease. 
So the problem was with the Canon Pinion, and I'm putting on some Mobius 9501 here, which is uh, specifically designed for Canon Pinion. Um, it is eye-wateringly expensive. And just slot the Canon Pinion on there nice and tight. I'm putting the sliding pinion in now and the clutch slightly wonky there but just got it seated nicely now get in the stem uh, each face of the stem needs to be lubricated this sort of square component and just slotted that in and I have noticed something really really not good um, I wasn't expecting to change this component, but if you look there at the sliding pinion teeth, they are horribly worn. I had not noticed that. Uh, thank God for the microscope, because look at that. That is like, oh, uh, that is not good at all. When you see uh, what I'm going to replace it with, uh, you'll realize just how nasty that is. And here is the replacement on the right and the completely mashed pinion on the left. Just looking at these in high magnification and uh, just swapping the clutches round to match the sliding pinions. So having stalled the new sliding pinion and as you can see that is just way, way better. So, turning now to the minute wheel, again, you can see the one on the left, the pinion in the middle is corroded, but the one on the right is much better. So just putting a bit of lubrication for the new replacement minute wheel, which is a lot shinier, it has to be said, than the uh, old one. I'm just checking that that works nicely there. Moving on to the cleaned sliding pinion yoke. Just going to pop that on. And check its function. Working fine there. A little bit of grease on the edge where the spring that we're about to install rubs up a against it and put a little bit too much on so just take that away with Rodico and then bring in the spring now placing the plastic on here has two functions once it stops me scratching anything and B it stops the spring flying off um, if anything goes wrong. Well, that's clipped in nicely. That's good. Now, moving the balance hack so that it's in the right location. So when I put the setting lever in, it locates with it uh, so that when you pull the crown out, the balance hack moves forward and stops the balance and just lubricating now the sliding pinion and just checking its function there with the spring placing on the intermediate wheel this again is a replacement component because the original one was pretty corroded um, so in terms of the motion work this is a lot of it is now replaced. Just popping on the setting lever jumper spring and fixing that down. That's good. Put a little bit of grease on the end of the spring itself because uh, again we've got metal on metal here and just clipping that in there and all of that should work now so the basic function of the keyless works is looking good 
pop on the hour wheel. Easy to forget that because quite often in movements that goes on uh, after all of the keyless works but uh, we've got this special component here and, and this is a new one uh, that operates the quick advance on the calendar and forgotten to do the yoke for the advancing wheel so putting the screw on there but oh that looks pretty horrid that screw it looks like it's caught something so just cleaned it up in the same way as I did before and pop that in so just polish the top of the screw with a stone now just turning to the date wheel jumper spring um, the screws for this are really quite small and uh, note to self um, must get something to stop my movement holder uh, sliding around the bench so much um, and just popping the screw in there when the movement holder is sliding around the bench it makes everything doubly difficult so need to come up with a little solution for that I think Now these are quite small screws and with these small screws you'll see that I'm supporting the screwdriver with a pair of tweezers that makes life much easier top tip I'm just cleaning it off with some Rodico uh, where would we be without Rodico okay the pallet fork is really tiny um, and it needs some special uh, pallet fork jewel grease on it which I'm putting on here uh, this is called the entry jewel and now moving on to the exit jewel um, I'm completely sure I'm putting it on the right face there actually it's quite generous so I do give it a a dunk in some isopropyl alcohol very quickly after applying the grease just to calm it down a little bit and now popping uh, elegantly the pallet fork back into the movement I have to be really really careful and patient with this the uh, pallet fork bridge going on now it takes quite a long time normally just to get this to locate properly um, and make sure the jewel is in place and I'm working late at night here so so much better to uh, leave it until the morning if you're doing something difficult late at night just leave it till the morning and everything is somehow easier so I've located the pallet fork in there and just going to check it's rocking freely in its jewels you have to be very very gentle with it because the pivots are about the size the diameter of a human hair uh, maybe a little bit less actually And just coming in to give it a little bit of lubrication on the pivot this is very low torque oil that I'm using here or rather oil designed for a low torque uh, pivot and popping on the calendar wheel turn the movement over do love that dirty great big jewel in the middle of the calendar wheel that is splendid just holding it down with a piece of pegwood and lifting the jumper spring to the side to get it to locate and then once it's down we can pop on the c-clip that holds it in place
placing the C-clip on there and again coming in with some plastic because we're going to need a little bit of pressure on the C-clip to get it to fit nicely where it locates and there's always a risk that you're going to scratch something particularly that jewel uh, if your screwdriver which is quite sharp slips off but that's done nicely and just check its operation nice and crisp as it's moving round there okay so we're going to replace the balance now first we need to put some power on the watch now the pallet fork is in there it's keeping the power on and then when power is in it we're just checking that there's power in the train by flicking the pallet fork from side to side and here we go coming in with the balance this is the bit oh now oh, what's that oh that looks nice sea wolf a sea wolf red i am so excited i'm joggling the camera um yeah i am doing a special edition of my sea wolf i'm only making 10 of these a year and they will come out in the autumn so check out the link in the description for more on sea wolf red cool. special edition and back with the rolex date just just pop in the balance in there uh, you have to locate the impulse jewel correctly in line with the horns on the pallet fork and there she goes now that is a pretty sight right there that is going nicely that is feisty yeah we like that coming in with the automatic works and uh, skipped forward a little bit there place them on and just securing the automatic works down with the two screws again using tweezers to stabilize and popping on the dial we're getting close now just gonna jiggle that around a little bit to get it to seat in properly and then checking the operation of the quick date change placing on the hour hand just locating that properly and before you do this you have to check that the uh, calendar has just turned over at midnight and just finding the right location and then pressing it home on with the minute hand and the same again just find the right location and press it home and there we are we have a running watch and that is looking quite nice okay stop 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 the music because i have just noticed as i was putting the bracelet back on the watch this and this is far too much wear on the spring bar in fact the whole bracelet the pins on them will be worn like this but you can see this is worn pretty much right through to the pins on the spring bar itself and it's not long before this will break so gonna need to swap this out let's just put that one down there and get my replacement box out So just select one the right size and we're going to replace the worn one with a nice new one like this. <laughs> 